All right, so how many Call of Duty fans do I have in the house today? Hopefully a million, because today we have, boom, the Uzi Pro from IWI. I am super excited to bring this review to y'all. Thank you so much for joining me, man. If this is your first time stopping by, please make sure, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, because this is an awesome gun I am bringing to y'all. By the way, a discontinued gun for some odd reason from IWI. So I am super happy to have this one. It's funny, man. I was talking to a buddy of mine that I work with on the Saturdays I have to work at my normal job. And we were talking about this gun. And he was like, dude, have you seen this? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I no, I haven't really paid a lot of attention to them, to be honest with you. Um, when I pulled it up, I bought it literally that day because it is just that cool. Uh, so let's talk about some of the features, man. It's going to come in a cardboard box. Nothing special there. It'll come with a manual lock, blah, 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 right? It's going to come with two 25 round magazines, or at least mine did. Let's talk about some of the specs and features here really quick. It's got a four and a half inch cold hammer forged barrel. The length is 10 inches with the brace folded. It's coming in right in at four and a half pounds. And this thing was basically designed for people with limited mobility and the operation of like an AR style pistol, all right? So it makes it a little bit easier to operate. They of course moved this charging handle from the top of the gun to the side of the gun, all right? And they also relocated the magazine release to be in a little bit better spot there. Uh, you have a threaded barrel right there. This is actually how you take down the gun, which I'll show you all here in a minute. You have a little Picatinny rail right here that you can use for lights or lasers or whatever. Squared off trigger guard. Here's your trigger. We'll talk about that after the shooting part of the review. And then you have a series of safety features. You have a grip safety back here. All right. And you do make, want to make sure you get a nice tight high grip up on the gun. You have your selector right here from fire to safe. Charging handle, of course, pretty easy to operate. Not too much of a strain on your hands. If you have weaker dexterity, I think this would be, it actually is a pretty easy gun to operate. I typically prefer side charging guns, um, even to an AR style. Well, although I like my ARs now, don't get me wrong, I still prefer this right here. It's just so much more intuitive, like the SCAR, um, even the X95, I just, I just really prefer that. So um, it also does come with sights straight from the factory. You're not gonna be able to see them too well, but we will take some pictures here, which you can uh, use to adjust your elevation, windage, all that good stuff. In the rear here, you can see you have a, basically a normal pistol sight right there. And then of course, pistol sight up front. Here's where your ejection port is. This is a blowback design, by the way. And you can see they flared it out here to give you better ejection and uh, better reliability. All right, so you have this polymer lower down here. Uh, so you do have this little bit of a flared part down here at the bottom. And the magazine well isn't necessary, necessarily flared, but I didn't find too much of an issue getting these mags in and out. Magazine release works fine with my hands and, and my size. So let's say I'm actually firing behind the gun. I need to reload. All right, I had to break my grip just a little bit to get those mags in and out, which I am happy to report we had no issues. Not that I was expecting any issues, but uh, that is always a good thing. The overall profile, this is a super short PDW, PCC, whatever you want to call it. So I was worried a little bit about the recoil impulse. Of course, we'll talk about that after the shooting part of the review. And then you have this SB tactical brace and this thing, you really just got to manhandle this into position because it has a heck of a locking device on it and it's going to lock to the side. Check out how short of a profile this thing is without with the brace folded like that. Super awesome. You can see your, uh, your design back here for the brace and basically to get this out, just do just like that. And it's going to be solidly locked in place just like that. You have a, a little chamber indicator right here that'll show you whenever you have a round in the chamber. And, and the great thing is too, because you have the side charging handle isn't on top, this actually allows you to have the full Picatinny rail, which I'm running a little 407C on top for this thing. Okay, so really cool design. Let me show you how it breaks down here really quick, and then we will hit the range. So you have a little locking tab right here. You just pull up on that, untwist this barrel nut, barrel's going to come right out just like that. Again, it's a cold 
hammer forged barrel. Really nice design there. And then once we got to this point, you have a little cover catch right here for the upper receiver. You're going to depress that back. Upper receiver is going to pop right off just like that. And then to get our recoil spring and breech block all that out, you're going to pull this back, lift it up just like that. You can see the inside right there. Yeah. And then you can see your uh, part of your feed ramp is actually made into the bottom of the gun. That thing got pretty, pretty nasty while we were shooting. And then here's your recoil spring guide rod, all that good stuff, firing pin, all in this one assembly. Again, it is blowback. So this is a pretty massive block right here in order to, uh, to operate uh, reliably. And it is a very reliable system. Of course, I could pull this pin out from this side and disassemble it further, but there's no need for this video, but I at least wanted to show you how to do that. So let's put it in reverse back into the gun. Drop down just like that. And then the upper receiver will slide in. top like that. And we are good to go there. And then all we need to make sure whenever we put this back in is there is a little flat edge right there. We just need to make sure that matches up with the bottom. Which it does. And then we're just going to screw this back on. Very easy design, and then once it stops clicking, then we're done. Boom, just like that. Freaking easy, really, really cool, right? So uh, let's hit the range, man. After that, we'll show you the trigger, how that looks, and then uh, we'll talk about pros and cons of the Uzi Pro. I will see you all in a minute. Badass, dude. All right, so hopefully y'all enjoyed that. I wanted to show you what this looks like next to a copperhead here really quick. So if we just line them up receiver to receiver, the copperhead is a short gun. The Uzi is super short. Check out the difference right there. And I've complained about the copperhead just being a little bit too short, especially when you shoot it compared to guns like the KP9, the SP5, and things like that. Um, which it's still, it is, but for whatever reason, man, I just felt like the Uzi was a super comfortable gun at the range. The brace back here does a really nice job for support. And I just, I don't know, overall, I thought the gun did a really amazing job. No issues, no hiccups, nothing like that. So happy to report on that. We shot a bunch of rounds through this thing, man, and it performed just like I was hoping it would. So pretty happy with this performance. Let me show you what the trigger looks like. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's not terrible either. Basically, you know, make sure you have that grip safety engaged. And it 
it's got some weight to it. Reset. You hear that first click? That is not the reset, by the way. That's the reset. Let's try it on the uh, little trigger gauge here. Okay, it's pulling out 11 pounds, but I, it's kind of hard to do this with the way I have to. All right, let's try it like this. Yeah, it's pulling an 11 pound mark, and I kind of believe that. It's got a heavy pull to it, but I don't feel like it affected my shots at all. Now, keep in mind, I was at like 12 yards. So if you're more at, let's say, 50 yards, 100 yards, you're really going to notice where that trigger is like, eh. But again, you, you, we're talking about an Uzi here. We're talking about an up-close, personal defense type of gun. For what it is, I think it's acceptable. Not the best, not near the best. It's acceptable, okay? So that's kind of where I was at with it. I didn't feel like that trigger was inhibiting me at all inside of 12 yards. I would probably even venture to say 25 yards. Anything outside that, you'll probably start to notice like, hey man, this thing needs something done with the trigger. Okay, so that's kind of where I was at with it. The Holliston did a great job on this gun. And the recoil really was super manageable. And that was one of the things I was really concerned with with the overall size of the gun, nine millimeter caliber, it really did a nice job. And keep in mind too, that with the Strybog that we had, um, it, it was also a blowback design. And because you have that big mass bolt moving back and forth each and every time compared to something like a piston gun, like your MPX Copperhead, it's going to give you a little bit more felt recoil. But even then I felt like this had a little bit less recoil than the Strybog. Very interesting how the different little designs and quirks and things uh, can affect that. So it was a very smooth gun. It, it really surprised me how smooth this gun was considering its size and its blowback design. Um, it actually did a really great job and that'll lead me right into pros, man. Overall size and everything is actually works very well for this gun. I love the side charging handle. I love the fact that it's already threaded takedown is super simple. You have your rail up top. Yeah, it, granted, you know, because I've used Uzis and Call of Duty and everything like that, would it be cool to have the charging handle up top and you're doing that? Yes. But I appreciate what they did because this makes it a little bit more usable. Uh, magazines, they give you two 25 round magazines, which I thought was great. The website says 25 and a 20, but I got two 25s. Uh, function and everything with this gun build quality, cold ham hammer forged barrel, everything seems to be really good. There was a few things I do not like though. I don't like this grip safety. It kind of gets in the way for me personally. I think the trigger could be better. And uh, the safety selector switch is actually not bad getting it from safe to fire. Getting it back to the other way, I just have to use my non-dominant hand to, to kind of move that back to this position if I don't want to break my grip. And speaking of breaking my grip, I did have to break my grip just a little bit to get to this magazine release, but it's so big. And if your hands are just a little bit bigger than mine, you're probably not gonna have any issues at all. It's a nice wide magazine release. It's serrated. They moved it for a better location. Really nice job there. Pick rail up top. Um, yeah, man, I think it's an overall, an awesome gun, awesome design, and I'm super happy to have one in my collection. This one will not be going anywhere anytime soon. So there it is, the IWI Uzi Pro. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this gun. Uh, leave them down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.